They said it couldn't be done. They said it wouldn't last. White man, black man, America F1. America F1, coming to you straight from San Francisco, California, Sherman Tillman, Michael Lawler. America F1. Osaka, Japan, and we saw a great race over the weekend at the Suzuka Grand Prix. I mean, this track, this circuit, the ambiance, and but not only that, it's the surrounding area. When you go into the Suzuka Circuit Park, you have a museum for petrol heads. You have an amusement park for the kids. You have tons of places to eat. It was everybody. I mean, everybody who loves Formula One. You have to make a trip out to Japan. You have to go check out the Suzuka Circuit. It's a great place to watch a race. It's a great place to bring your family. I recommend it as when you're thinking about where am I going to go outside of my area for my first race, Japan. I mean, it's near, you, you can take the bullet train, you stay in Osaka, you can take the bullet train to Tokyo for a day or two. You could, you could fly into Tokyo, stay in Tokyo for three, four days, and then come to Osaka, stay there, go see the race for two, three days, and then come back. And every night, and stay in Osaka. It's just, it's, there's just so much to see. There's just so much to do. Before we get into the race, just remember that here at America F1, M-E-R-I-C-A, we ask you to like, subscribe, comment, tell your friends about us. And if you're listening to us on our podcast, you know, give us uh, a thumbs up, go in there and give us a five rating and give us a comment about the show because this all helps with the algorithm. This all helps us grow our channel. You know, we do this strictly for the fans and Mike, who's my co-host, is in Thailand again. I mean, this guy, I mean, what, I mean, what's going on him in Thailand, you know? He says he wants to retire there, but he's... Second time in like two months. Anyhow, this episode of America F1 is sponsored by Doobie Energy Drinks. Doobie gives you more focus, more energy, and it's more fun. So go and get your Doobie Energy Drink. Buy the two-pack and use the code AmericaF1, M-E-R-I-C-A, for your discount. That's M-E-R-I-C-A. F1 for your Doobie Energy Drink discount. Now, let's go right into the race. We're going to do a 10 to 1 since we're on location in the Osaka Weston Hotel. Thanks for the Weston Hotel for hosting. They've been fabulous. It's a great hotel. I would recommend to everybody if you go to Osaka, Japan, stay at the Westin. It's right by the Westin. I mean, the Osaka station. It's a hop, skip, and a jump to the trains. And there's great shopping. And there's shopping everywhere in Osaka. I mean, this place is, I mean, it's insane. It's New York on steroids. Um, there's so many people. There's so much to do. It's, it's a to-do destiny. You got to come. And... We went today, we went to Osaka Castle, we went to Kyoto. I mean, it's just, ah, just, there's just so much. Yuki Sonoda finished in 10th place. Now, any time that the, the cash app R&B can finish in the top 10, it's a win. It's a win. It's a win. And Yuki, not only do the Japanese fans go insane and you can see I'm wearing my Yuki hat because I keep telling you and I keep telling Mike that Yuki's a damn good driver. He needs I think he needs a better engineer because sometimes the strategy calls are probably not that great. But 
the guy's fast, man. I mean, when are people going to put, I told you before, put respect on Carlos Sainz's name, and I'm right, right? Carlos Sainz is badass. I told you, and nobody was listening, and now you all listen, and now I'm telling you, Yuki is good, man. He's good. He's young. He's fast over a lap. He's beating the crap out of Daniel Ricciardo, even though Daniel Ricciardo was only, like, I think he was like a tenth, only a tenth or two tenths behind him this time in qualifying because, you know, they gave him a whole new chassis because he was just like, why am I so far behind Yuki? There's something else going to be wrong. It can't be this. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see what Daniel really could do because he had qualified 11th, but with the crash with um, Alex Albon on the first lap, which brought a red flag, which we were all in the stands for a whole half an hour waiting for them to get up the debris, fix the barrier. And it was Daniel's fault, let's be honest. At the start, like five cars passed the guy up. I mean, everybody and their mom passed him up. I think my mom had a had her bag and she was in a cart and she passed Daniel Ricardo up. That's right. Everybody passed Daniel up. And so so many cars were passing him up. I think he kind of he slid over to the right, which, you know, there was no one there except Alex Albon. You just can't slide over like that in in the first lap. You have to look in the mirror and be cognizant that there's probably going to be somebody there. You, he wasn't trying to pass anybody. He was just moving over because he didn't want more people to pass him. And then Albon hit, you know, they they really it was wheel, Albon's back wheel to Ricardo's front wheel, and then off they both went. And at the circuit, it looked pretty, it looked like a pretty bad crash because they were going pretty good but they're getting ready to take that was turn one then turn two so they're getting ready to take that left on turn three and right into the barriers that went and we really didn't get to see Alex Albon or we didn't get to see Daniel Ricardo's pace which I think would have been similar to Yuki but not as good and Yuki finished 10th because he was in a DRS train for the longest time but on I think it was his second stint they had a fabulous pit stop. I mean, all that DR's train went in to the pits, and Yuki's pit stop was, I mean, just fast. And he came out ahead of everybody in his DR's train, and then away he went. And he pretty much after that, he was ahead. But before I go into ninth place, I really want to talk about... And you can see the pace difference. You know, when you're watching it on TV, you really can't. You can see how fast they're going, but you can't really tell the pace. And you can't see it when they're coming at you lap after lap. And you can see which cars are really fast down the straight, which ones um, hit, especially turn one, which is really a, a great turn at the Suzuka track. You can really tell who which car has pace and which car is kind of lacking in the pace and i have to say lance stroll i mean i i know everyone rags on lance stroll everybody land but man come on man alonzo finishes six and he's way back in the pack he's caught in a drs train he can't pass like yuki can't pass like magnus and he can't pass any of these people uh and his pace over, you know, qualifying is pretty slow. And I know his dad loves him. And I know his dad wants to give him a shot. But if Aston Martin is going to be considered a real threat, a real team, he, he's going to either have to buy a second team and put Lance on that team. Or he's going to have to bring in a better talented driver. Because his pace just wasn't... It wasn't up to par, man. He was slow over Suzuka. And Suzuka is a fast track. And I think it's really technical. And the drivers love it. But it really shows the talent levels. I mean, like even Oscar Piastri, he made that one mistake. And then all of a sudden, you know, we'll, we'll get to that. But Russell passed him, which I thought was a, could have been a penalty. It could have been five seconds. But, okay, I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. But... 
Lance Stroll, compared to Yuki, he just looks slow. Even compared to Magnussen, he looks slow. Compared to Hulkenberg, who finished in 11th, he looks slow. And, you know, I don't know who's out there pulling for Lance, and probably everybody wants him to go, and I know his dad wants him to be in the car, and I get it. But sooner or later, you got to tell your son, maybe the WC or another uh, car, you know, supercars or something else, GT, you know, endurance racing, something else, you know, go to IndyCar, you know, that crappy Formula E, you know, because those engines suck and I can't stand listening to it. Um, But maybe something else is up for Lance Stroll because... You know, man, I'm sorry. Formula One just ain't it, bro. It just ain't. All right. In ninth place, we had, uh, I don't know, Lewis, man. Lewis, you know, he said that him and Leclerc uh, bumped tires in the first lap. And so he let um, George Russell by because he said he had damage. And I just... I. The strategy, okay, 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 I gotta get, I, I'm getting it out right here. Mercedes, I've been saying it for two years. Your strategy is dog shit. Dog shit. Okay, you're not a front runner. You're in the midfield now. You have to start taking chances with the strategy. Not only do you have to start taking chances with the strategy, you have to have different strategy. One strategy for the league car, whoever you know qualified better and who's ever in the league, which would have been Hamilton, and then the another strategy for for the second car. Because you first of all, you pitted Hamilton too late on the first stand. I think it was about two or three laps too late. Those tires were dead. Okay. Then <laughs> you pitted him too early when he, on the last stint he had the hards on the race was almost damn over just let him go he was in clean air he he, uh, he probably could have finished I don't think he had the pace to finish ahead of Alonzo but he definitely had the pace to be ahead of Oscar so why pit him with only a couple laps left? it just didn't make any sense you're on hard tires what are you doing or at least double stack. Do something different. You have to take chances in the midfield. You are not a front runner anymore. It's hard for them to face the reality. It's not for the fans. You can see it. The pace of the Mercedes compared to Alonzo's pace, compared to uh, Norris's pace, definitely the Ferraris. and, and uh, Ferrari and... Red Bull are at a different class and pace comparatively to the Mercedes. And it must be really tough for the Mercedes when you think about it. It's two customer teams ahead of you. Aston Martin, they're ahead of you. They got better pace. I mean, not Lance Stroll, but Fernando Alonso does. And then McLaren has better place. You know, Oscar made a mistake, and if he didn't make that mistake, Russell would have never caught up and got by him. And I also thought that Russell's pass was pretty clunky. I mean, it was it almost looked like bumper cars, like he forced him off, you know, and, and, and didn't say anything about it. But my point is the Mercedes strategy is dog shit. Okay, you have to fix the strategy. You're not a front runner anymore. You're in the midfield. When you finish seventh and ninth, you are in the midfield. Okay. Now, if you're going to be best of the midfield, you got to take some chances. You got, I mean, another thing. You never listen to Hamilton about the strategy. You never listen to Hamilton about the correction of the car. The guy's a seven-time world champion. Okay. Now the engineers think they know everything. But you got it wrong three years in a row. You're not going to win a race. Mercedes is not winning a race. Let's face the reality, folks. They're not going to win a race this year. That pace, when you look at the cars, and Suzuka's a fast track, near the end of that straight, Mercedes was slow. I mean slow. They 
did not look like a top three car. They weren't faster than Ferrari. They weren't faster than McLaren. And they were nowhere near Red Bull. Facts. I see why Hamilton's leaving. And damn it, they should have let him go. Like I said, they should have done a switch. And let him go to Ferrari early. And take Carlos Sainz for a year. And then Lewis could have been rid of this. Because it's a mess. Now, finishing in eighth place was Oscar Piastri, who had a, uh, I mean, he, he made that one mistake. His pace wasn't that great, but I think if it wasn't for that mistake, he would have obviously finished ahead of George Russell, seventh. Uh, he finished in eighth. It kind of, you know, I don't think he had a great race for the pace in that car. And the other thing I want to say is that Hamilton when they pitted him, he would be like by himself and he kept closing the gap. He was probably each time they pitted him, he was like 15 seconds probably behind Russell and he closed the gap every time. So he had good pace. It's just, you know, they went to the hards. They should have stayed with the mediums. They had two hards. They used up all the mediums and, and I'm back to Mercedes. I don't know why, but they used up all the medium, so they had the hearts for the race. Also, the temperature for the race was like six degrees or six, you know, felt Celsius hotter. And that affected the car so much that they didn't have the pace that they had in the third qualifying. The car is a dog. The car is a prima donna. It's too cold. It's too hot. This affects it. That affects it. They made a bad car. That's the reality. McLaren has a better car. Oscar should have finished ahead of Russell if he wouldn't have made that mistake. Also, I also thought in the pitch strategy wasn't that great with Piastri. But moving along, George Russell. I mean, yeah, we all know I'm not the biggest George fan. I, I think he's too, he. I just don't think he's. Personally, I just don't think he's that good. If they bring science to the car next year or... Uh, I mean, Alonzo's already said, I'm not going to Mercedes. We're already ahead of them. Why would I want to go to them? Sponsors are leaving him also. Alonzo had great pace. He looked great in that Aston Martin. You know, a couple things, a couple more upgrades to that car. And I think, you know, Alonzo's going to be... You know, going for that third place, maybe fourth place. I think the Ferraris are ahead of Aston Martin. That's very obvious. But, you know, with a couple upgrades, who knows what could happen. All right. Norris. He had a pretty good race. I mean, he, he qualified third, and he kind of went backwards to fifth. Uh, for the McLaren, you know, I think that's probably where they should finish. You know, for, vying for fourth and fifth according to which track they're at. Maybe you'll get a third here and there. Um, it's not a... I don't think Norris is going to win his first race this year or Oscar Piastri is going to win a race this year with the pace in that car, especially over this circuit. I think they would probably have a better chance at like a street circuit and there has to be some type of accident or something like that. Because if there's no accidents, um, the Ferraris are, are faster and Red Bulls just in a different class. Okay, and finishing in fourth place was Charles Leclerc. Hey, he had a good race. Uh, I think he qualified eighth or ninth. I think he qualified ninth. And he had a great race. Charles, I mean, some people were upset that they let uh, Carl Sainz by on this one stint, you know, when they went in and, you know, Sainz was ahead and then they went in the pits and through the pits, you know, mix up. And then Leclerc was ahead. But, you know, Science was faster. Science was faster. Science was faster. Stop crying, Charles Leclerc fans. I'm a Charles Leclerc fan. He's my second favorite driver. But let's be honest. Carlos was on it, man. He was fast that day. And he's been on it the whole year. And I kept telling everybody, you know, 
put some respect on his name. Mike thinks he's not a, a number one driver. I definitely think Carlos Sainz is a number one driver. He, he, he's not the greatest in qualifying, but he's better than average, okay? But he's great. He has great race pace. He's good on the strategy. He knows what he's doing out there. And I just think he's a good driver. I, I just really do. I think he's above average Formula One driver. And I think he can lead a team. I definitely think he can lead a team way. I have more faith than Carlos Sainz leading a team than I have in George Russell. I have, I, mean, I, just, I just, it's it's true. It's true. It's true. You don't have to believe me. It's okay. But it's true. And sometimes the truth hurts. Now, moving on to Checo Perez. Now, Sergio, second, second, a second, and I think he had a, what, a fourth or a fifth. Um, you know, he's in good form this year. He qualified like a tenth off of her step, and finally. And I think it has a lot to do with Christian Horner and now is definitely in charge of the team. We didn't see Max's dad at the race. Um, and I also think that maybe he's trying to give Checo because everybody was saying, oh, well, the cars aren't the same. You know, this car is different from the other car. I think he's really uh, now we're going to see what Checo can do. In qualifying, I don't think he's faster than Max in qualifying, but at street tracks, hey, he might have a shot, and he might win maybe three or four races this year, instead of you know I think he won he won two last year, and they're both at street tracks. But you know he looked very good, and there's no reason to change Checo out of that car. You won every year you have Checo with Verstappen. He's a solid number two driver. Leave that man alone. Don't retire, Checo. Keep on racing, man. You can do it, bro. All right. Now, the Super Max. I mean, what can you say that hasn't been said? I think Max is kind of like Vettel. He's a front runner. I don't think he's the greatest guy. If he finishes, like, in qualifying fifth or sixth, which he will never do in that car because that car is a rocket ship. And it's so suited for his driving style that unless something dramatic happens, they, for whatever reason, get the balance wrong for a race or, you know, they don't get the setup right, something like that, or he gets in a crash, the guy's going to win races. And it's kind of boring, to be honest, because he's so far ahead, there's no challenging. Because at least in the Hamilton era, the second car... And it was Rosberg, and there was a fight at the front, and that's what people want to see. They want to see a fight at the front. And what I'm hearing is they've got these new regulations totally wrong, and the arrow is totally spinning out the cars. So, it's just, and there are even rumors that they might delay the new uh, um, cars. Instead of 26, it might be 27, so the new regulations won't kick in in 20, 2026. They'll kick in in 2027, and if that happens, that's a nightmare for fans because then you've got another added year of Max Verstappen dominance, and it's boring television. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's freaking boring. Even though this race was good, it's boring up at the front. When you're vying for first and second, you kind of already know who's going to be first. And you don't even have a question, like, is check, you know, you don't have a check, a question about it. And I, I don't know. If it was me, and if I was in charge of the FIA, these are the things I would do. One, go back to V8s and V10s, okay? You could, people start the V8s and V10s on a dime. They don't even have to. They just get out the whole specs and let's go. It's motor racing, people. Burn the fuel. Burn the fuel. S stop with all this all sustainability and give me a break. It's racing. You want to hear loud sounds. You want to hear fast cars. And that's what you go out for. The smells, the sound, and the speed. 
No one's going to be listening if it's like Formula E. If it's like Formula E, a lot of fans are going to leave. I know I am. I know this podcast will turn into, we'll, we'll be talking about IndyCar and NASCAR and WEC because we will not talk about electric cars on this podcast. It's not going to happen. Okay? It's not. And I think a lot of other people are with me on that. Now, going to the Suzuka circuit. Oh, wow. They have a Honda museum. They have, which is awesome, motorcycles, cars. Then they have this huge area for food and, you know, the... the the merchandise they had a lego like display of cars like the mercedes car was a lego car and they have a a stage with a big screen and they have tons and i do mean tons of rides they have so many rides there it's an amusement park it literally is an amusement park it's the greatest place for you to go for your first race and bring your kids and they will have a blast. And now that they moved the race from October, November to now here in April, I mean, it did rain a couple of days like in practice, but for the race, it was sunny. For qualifying, it was great. More times than not, it's going to be sunny during this time than it would be in October, November. Also, you get to see the cherry blossoms bloom right now. And that's what a lot of people came for. When you're out here in Japan, a lot of people came for the cherry blossoms. And then you get to see the cherry blossoms and you get to see an awesome race. So, now, staying in Japan. Now, people stay in Nagoya. People people stay in Nara. uh, Don't stay in Suzuka. There's nothing to do in Suzuka uh, unless you're going to go to the amusement park with your kids, but if you come to Japan, you have to see the sights. You can't just come here just for the race. You have to go to Kyoto. You have to go to Tokyo. You have to do these things because Japan, it, it's its one of the places in the world that I think you could be here for months and not see everything. And there's only two places in the world like that. It's Japan and Italy. Those are the only two places, in my opinion, that you could be here a total of a month and still there's more and more for you to see and explore. Osaka is such a beautiful and huge city and Tokyo is just like the most people in the world and it's a madhouse and there's stores everywhere, shopping mecca, there's food everywhere, there's, there's... And it's easy to get around because the metro and the trains and the subways and the bullet train. And it takes a little time trying to figure out everything. What I would do is map out everything before I come here to get yourself an idea what trains you got to take. It's pretty easy. Once you get here, you have your Google Maps. You definitely have to have an extra battery or a battery pack for your phone. Because if you lose power in that phone... (laughs) <laughs> it's going to be trouble to get around. I'm telling you, it's that big and there's so many subways because there's different lines. There's a JR line. There's, you know, there's, there's like six, seven different, it's like competition, six, seven different types of subways to get to certain places. And then Osaka subway is obviously different from Tokyo subway. And Tokyo has all these different lines you have to take and it's way crowded and they're pushing you in to get in the damn um subway line it's it's a to get in the train it's a madhouse but it's beautiful it's well worth the adventure and i recommend that all you fans out there take the time to circle in one of these days suzuka raceway and come out to the suzuka circuit and experience not only a great race a great venue but the fans are awesome. The Japanese fans are just out of control, and they dress up, and it's 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 the best. It's really one of the only race I could compare it to, as far as the atmosphere. Well, there's two other races that I've been to that have the great Monza. Obviously, for Ferrari fans, is like the mecca. We went last year, and it's 
it's uh, getting there. The subway system's not as dialed in as Japan. I don't think really anywhere in the world subway system is as dialed in as Japan's is. Because um, everything's on time. You could set your watch by it. And if it's even late, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're bowing and they're saying sorry. And they're, you know, instead of like 10 minutes late, it's like two minutes late if it is. And they'll show the delay on the Google, and they'll show the delay on the, the board, but it rarely happens. But it does happen, like in commute times, there may be some delays. And what usually that stems from, and I found this out, is either animals jump on the track and they have to clear the animals, or unfortunately people commit suicide by jumping on the track. And yeah, that's that. obviously that's a little macabre, but it's the reality, it's true. Um, so, Monza's awesome. Suzuka's awesome. No other race really. I mean, if you're a Max Verstappen fan, obviously the Red Bull Ring, we went to that. And out, you know, Vienna, the Red Bull Ring's outside of Vienna, and that is a sea of orange. But it's nothing like Monza. Um, but. I mean, Monza a whole different animal. But, you know, you could stay at Milan, and then you could go see to Rome, you could go to Florence, and there's just, this is what I'm talking about. When you come to Suzuka, there's so many other places to go, so many other things to do. Some of these races you go to, there's not much other than the race to, you know, to see. It's not a go-to venue. Now, I hope you enjoyed my review of the Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka. It was just, I'm, ta- I'm actually doing this in the hotel. I'm um, going to go back upstairs and get ready for bed. You know, we're going back to the States tomorrow. And I, I want to also say that we remember here at America F1 Jules Bianchi. I was here for that race in 2014 that took Jules Bianchi's life. He was the last. A uh, person or Formula One driver who, who died on the track, and he had a tragic death where it was wet, and the race was pretty much over. It was under a yellow, and he ran into or kind of ran off and into the tractor, and the tractor lifted up and landed on him. And he was slated, some were saying, for the Ferrari seat because. He was outperforming that, I think it was Marussia back then, so he was outperforming that Marussia car. And he was a a fabulous human being, a a nice young man. And we remember Jules Bianchi because we should always remember our Formula One history. And we should remember that he also passed away here. Or he didn't pass away, he passed away later on. But his injury happened here at the Suzuka circuit. And... Saying that, please like, follow, subscribe to our channel. We're on YouTube. We are on Spotify and Apple. We also have a TikTok channel. We also started up an Instagram. You can buy us a coffee. Uh, It's down here in the bio. Buy us a coffee so we can come to these great venues And we can keep bringing you some content. Keep on racing, everybody.